So today I'm going to demonstrate how I do a platter. And the first thing I have to do when I'm doing a platter, I'm going to have to get this stuck to the back. This is nine pounds of clay. Rather than try to just take a chance that it'll stick, I'm going to pound it down and make it stick a little bit first. Then I'm going to spin it a little bit. And I add some water. And it doesn't matter whether this is well centered to begin with because the way it's set up with the dead rest, I can easily center it no matter what. So I'm going to get a little faster. This nine pounds centers very easily. I'm making a very large platter. 20 inch bat here. You can see it's uneven at the top. So that's what the coning is all about. So if we can get this clay to be even, it'll be quite easy to make the platter come out perfectly round. Because I've got a bracing set up right here with the dead rest, it's really easy to hold the hands very still. I'll do one more pull. Another cone up a little again. And you can see how much more even it is already. So down it goes. And now, I'm going to begin widening. And I want to draw attention to this junction right here. If you allow this to form a bead that can jump over that ring of slip, you'll wind up with slip trapped under the platter that will ruin it. So a lot of pressure is applied with this hand right here to make the clay flow along the bat rather than to flow in a crusted wave. As I begin to drive this down, you'll see I'm keeping a huge amount of pressure with my left arm. Here we go. Here we go. Even more pressure. Both hands working now. I keep a lot of water to it. The main advantage to the rod and restand method is it works with any size platter you want to do. So this is almost there. I'll slow it a little bit. And here's my rod right here, ready to go. Put some water on the middle. And now watch. Get this position just right. And I'm rotating it slightly as I advance it downward. The rotation continually reintroduces the slip that's forming on the rod on the leading edge, which is my right hand, and it's forcing the platter to grow outward. You'll see the slip coming around from this side, so now I'll take this over, and now it's going to in introduce that slip as I turn it. And now I'm to the edge of the bat already. You can see that. Here's where it really is cool. I'll drop the wheel speed. Slow, and maybe even a little bit slower. Slower yet. And here's my restand tool. If I put it right here, I'll just take my time, begin flaring the, the ladder back up off the bat, very, very firmly. Now, even though the platter is really wavy at the rim, that won't matter at all. Because watch, I'll slow it a little bit more. And this is what's going to happen. I'm going to put my hand down here, and I'm going to begin gradually driving the thumb and finger together up into the rim. And I'm simply centering the edge so that it runs absolutely true all the way around. If I maintain even, steady pressure, the irregularities gradually disappear around the perimeter. The next thing I have to do, this is really important, this section in through here has to be ribbed dry. We want every speck of water off this before I lay it down because you'll never get back under there after it's laid down. So I'm cleaning it up completely. And I can save all of the scraped off material. So I'll go in again. And when I get it up to the bottom of the rim, here it's now clean, very, very clean. The best part is this can't, this isn't going to crack due to moisture issues now. There's no moisture under there. 
Next, I want to make sure I clean up the bat very thoroughly because when you're moving this around, sometimes you'll be pushing the bat back into the shelf. And you may, in fact, have what happened, what happens to me every once in a while, is my hand will slip over the edge of the bat, slide in, and punch through the side of the platter if the pet bat's wet and slimy. So I keep them clean all the way to here. And you want to get the stuff off the edge here, too. And once it's nice and clean like that, and I'm going to do a little bit of a light 20 degree undercut here. That goes right down to the bat. That makes sure that the cutoff wire cinches down to the bat the entire distance around. Now, here comes the cleanup. I've got a, a cleanup sponge right here that'll get the water out and give me some working material for the next step, which is to lay the, the platter out. So there we go. I'll start by putting the flange on. Here's the flange. And I'm going to round it too. Make it nice and round and even. Now, the layout comes here. Widen the rim. And I'm well braced here so that I don't have any issues with the thing moving out. I'm just going to keep widening. I can drop speed even further. This wheel has about 100 to 1 speed reduction. I don't mean that it has the reducer itself. The motor, the motor control is the latest version. It's super quiet. You can barely even hear it run. But it also can turn the wheel slower than I've ever seen. It turns so slowly, it can just, it'll be smooth even when it's just barely turning. That's how amazing the new speed controls are. You can see I'm gradually sculpting the bowl, the bowl shaped portion, the curved section, lower and wider. And better to have it stand up a little tall initially and gradually sculpt it down than to be too aggressive and collapse it. But it's dry on the outside, so there's, if I start drying the inside now, it's going to be really, really strong. And it's a lot, very unlikely that it'll, it'll ever slump or collapse after I get this dry. So I'm removing all of the slip on the inside now. And I'm just touching it lightly on the outside to stabilize it. The curve is almost done. Now we're going to start polishing the face. So start in the middle. And I'm just removing the excess water and any little debris that might be on there. Sometimes little chips will land in there, but you can polish this to a T. You just want it absolutely smooth. A little at a time. There's the preliminary. It's getting more and more of the water off. And I've got a little junction. Oops, I dropped a little blob right there. That won't hurt anything. I take it right here. I'm going to begin working my way back through that little junction right there. And we'll do it again. I want this to be super smooth because it's got a very, very complex pattern on it that won't tolerate throwing lines. They just make it impossible to do the pattern if I have throwing lines on here. You wouldn't have to go to this length, these lengths if you were leaving the throwing lines. There it is transitioning to the shoulder. Here's the lip right here. And a little bit of polish here. And I think we're ready. So now we're going to do the plastic on the rim. Oops, drop that. A little hard to hold on to some of this stuff when your hands are all slimy like this. So that's smooth. Here we go. And that's it right there. There's the flag. The other thing I'll draw your attention to is I do not wire these off at first. I wait until they've firmed up. And I'm really careful lifting it off. I can't jar the thing at all because if I jar it, I can actually um, collapse it. So I have to slide my hand in under. And there's a platter where there was just a lump of clay just a minute ago. 